Heavenly Father, as we take this study back up again this morning, we ask for your presence. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be in attendance, guiding our discussion, uh, helping us to understand the light that you have for us. We pray that you'd pour the latter rain out upon us, um, that the production we're doing here to send this out over the internet would be uh, blessed. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to go back over or go back into where we were at the end yesterday and raise some some question marks um, for our consideration. The one is, the, the, the question mark I'm raising to start with is I, me, I'm putting a lot of weight on what I'm calling the midnight chiasm. Uh, I could be wrong, okay? You know, what, what authority do I have to say that this is the point of reference? You've heard the logic that I use, that it's where the, the temple's open for Ezekiel, and I can make a case there. Um, but in connection with that, I've argued that it's the, the center waymark in a chiasm that is the most defining waymark. And I want to make sure, if that isn't correct, then we probably are getting a little skewed on our understanding. So I'm going to give you three witnesses. I'm going to start with three witnesses to that to see if, if you think the logic that I've employed is correct. This being the, the first one, the time that Christ confirms the covenant with many for one week. And when we've taught this parallel history down here in the past, and there's a variety of ways that you do that, not just this one. Um, when you do the, the, what we call the pattern of Christ, and we show 30 years of Christ preparation, and then there's 30 years of papal preparation, then Christ gives his testimony for three and a half years, and the papacy gives its testimony for three and a half satanic testimony for three and a half prophetic years. This isn't the only way you can illustrate the, these lines. And what I'm saying is this is the line of Christ, and this is the line of Antichrist. But the, the issue I'm raising is, is it valid to say that this waymark, the center waymark, is the primary point of reference? It's, it certainly appears to be here. You've got all kinds of witnesses that the cross is the center of everything. Christ on the cross is the center of everything. So you, if you feed that into this consideration. So... Is everyone comfortable that this is valid? If it's not valid, what I'm saying about midnight uh, may not be impacted too bad, too, too profoundly, but I want to get over here to another chiasm. But I don't want to get there until we assess whether the logic about this center point being the main one if we all agree with it. And the reason for it is September, no October, October 13th, November 9th, and July 18th form a chiastic structure. 252, 252. This one is not the chiastic structure of midnight where we go down here and put September 7th and January 11th. Okay, this is another chiasm though. And this one we got to be straight about, I think. So, the re so I'm over here. I'm just challenging our premises, is it the, the center waymark that is the point of reference? And I'll put another one over here. Um, I don't know these dates 
off the top of my head, the BC dates. So I do know the time periods. 215 years, 215 years. This takes you to when Jacob goes down into Egypt. And some people might, this is the 430 years of Abram's prophecy in Genesis 15. And some people, because this is when Jacob goes down into Egypt to join with Joseph, they might put Jacob here. But I wouldn't put Jacob here, personally. I'd put Joseph here. Um, and Joseph's there when Jacob goes down into Egypt, so he's a, he's a player. Um, you can demonstrate that from here to here, and then again from here to here, there are four generations. So what I'm saying is, on all kinds of... Four, four, four total. Four generations from Abraham to Joseph and four generations from Jacob, and I don't think it would be those patriarchs particularly usually show it, to the time of Moses. Okay, there's eight generations in this history, but each of these is four generations, each of them are 215 years. Where, where do you, you know the story of Joseph when Jacob comes down into history? Um, how old was Joseph then? At what point? When jo Jacob goes down, in, Jacob is going down into oh. Egypt right here. How old is Joseph? He's 30 years. When he stood before Pharaoh, he was 30 years old. Uh, so you got a 30. Uh, actually, the 30 would be over here in this one. But this one here, this one here, if you remember what I said yesterday, or you already know it from your own studies from a long time ago, this way mark here, the, the baptism, is this way mark. The baptism illustrates the cross and the resurrection. That's what the baptism is. So, prophetically, you can plug in a 30 over here. So you have Abraham giving this covenant prophecy, the covenant prophecy. You have Moses, the one that's going to bring together the covenant people that will go in the promised land, if you want to say it like that, in fulfillment of Abraham's prophecy. How is it that Joseph, what is it about Joseph that would be the, the justification for making him the center point? Is that is it justified? And what would you call this? I call this the hundred and forty-four thousand. Is that a is that valid? That to a valid description of this chiasm? Why would it be the hundred and forty-four thousand? And see, this is where we're at. This is, this is where I'm at. This is the point that I'm making this morning. I'm standing in front of everyone, and I'm putting out some conclusions that I've reached. And you either have to reject it or accept it, but if you accept it, you probably ought to figure out why you accept it and if that acceptance is valid. So I see the covenant on the bottom. The covenant, you could call it 144,000 based on Abraham's covenant, Moses' covenant. I don't know how I would fit Joseph in on that covenant. When Jacob goes down into Egypt, where does he go before he gets to Egypt? Make a uh, where does he go, not what does he do? Joseph or Jacob? Jacob. Jacob. Shiloh. No, we don't go to Shiloh. He goes to Beersheba. Beersheba, the well of seven oaks. The well of seven. What? Okay, the well of seven is what? What's the seven? Okay. 
the 2520. It, it, if you take Beersheba through the scriptures, it's a symbol of the covenant. And J Jacob decides he's going into Egypt. And before he enters into Egypt, he stops at Beersheba. So you got your covenant mark there where he's going to join with Joseph. But is Joseph or is it Jacob? I'm saying it's, it's Joseph, and one of the reasons I'm saying it is this line here, this is emphasizing the empowerment of the Antichrist. This is the empowerment of Christ. Well, over here is where he becomes Christ, but the cross is here. Um, and Joseph is a type of Christ, is he not? Yes. Joseph is, <laughs> Joseph is a type of Christ for so many reasons. Um, and he's also 30 years old right here. So I, I'm saying that this, Joseph is a symbol of the 144,000 at the end of the world. And so is Abram, isn't he? This is the faith that the 144,000 are going to have to manifest. And you're going to have to be a child of Abraham by faith. What about Moses? Is he, does he have a connection with the 144,000 even though he gets laid to rest? Yeah, he's, he's the symbol of the messenger, um, at minimum, the messenger to the 144,000. Because he says, the Lord thy God will raise up a prophet like unto myself, in Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. And that was fulfilled in the time of Christ, by who? By Christ. Because Moses is also a symbol of Christ. Okay, so... All of these are a symbol of the people at the end of the world that will fulfill Abraham's covenant prophecy about a chosen people that are the 144,000. Is that a valid? See, I'm picking the label on this. Is it a valid labeling? And is it valid to say Joseph is the, the center point? When, when does the story of Joseph really begin? When he goes into Egypt, isn't it? I mean, it be, his dreams. How many dreams does he have? Two dreams. Okay, two dreams. Um, when he goes into Egypt, though, when he's sold by his brothers into Egypt on the way from be, being taken out of the pit to Egypt, what does Ellen White say that he does? He what? Becomes a man. Becomes a man but he, he covenants that he is going to... Serve God. That he's... No, yes, but no. That he's going to return to the faith of his fathers. He returns to the old paths. Okay, so Joseph is a symbol of someone that returns to the old paths and is faithful about that. Um, and he's going to have a struggle with... The 144,000 are going to have a struggle with the combination of church and state, right? Um, what was his struggle with Potiphar's wife? She wanted to get him to enter into an unlawful relationship. Okay, and then he's in prison. And how many dreams are in prison? Two. Two dreams in prison. Um... There's doublings throughout this. There's doublings throughout the story of Joseph. Uh, there's the two dreams of the baker and the butler. There's his two dreams. There's another two. It's not popping in my head. The doubling is emphasizing what? Midnight cry. And the midnight cry takes place in the history of who? 144,000. And when he's raised up to deal with Pharaoh... What's the crisis for Pharaoh? Islam. An east wind is going to, is going to strike. Oh, there it is. There it is. What is it? Pharaoh's two dreams. Okay, there's the third double dreams. Joseph has two double dreams. The baker and the butler are a double dream. And Pharaoh has double dreams about the east wind wiping out the crop. After seven years of plenty, seven years of problem. So Joseph is dealing with the east wind 
in the world. Egypt's the world. Okay, so, is it valid to use the center point as the primary point of reference on a chiasm? It seems too amazed to me. Upon the testimony of how many... Two or three, a thing is established. Okay, that's the point. Is this enough? I would think it would be enough. Whenever we say that the center point what defines the chiasm, okay, the way I'm conceptualizing that in my mind is that it's the center point speaks to both sides, as it were. Yeah, the beginning yeah. and the end are going to have to have some kind of connection with each other, but they're going to be governed by that center yeah, point. My mind always goes back to this simple sentence, one of my favorite in the spirit of prophecy from Great Controversy. I, I mentioned it the other day. Great Controversy 652, the mystery of the cross explains all other mysteries. Great Controversy 652. 652. So, I would... I would purpose to use the principle in that set in that statement and apply it to each one of those and ask myself does this center point explain as the statement says the I'm not sure the other how to, how to say it the, uh, the uh, anyway the, the, the chiasm or the, the, the two Opposing, if that's is that the right word, uh, sides of the chiasm or ends of the chiasm. The two terminal points. And it, uh, up here, okay, here you have Christ crucified, here you have Christ baptized, which is Christ crucified. Down here you have Stephen. Is that speaking to the cross? Sure. Okay, change of dispensation. The, the Jewish nation, right here, what happened in the, at, at the veil of the temple? So it's ripped in two, okay? This is just another illustration of this. Another thought is, using the statement from the Desire of Ages 799, where she says that the Old Testament... Oh, no, no, no the, uh, the, the miracles of Christ are... Proof, proof of His divinity. Of His divinity. But the strongest proof that, that he is a savior of the world is the, is, is the fulfillment. Comparing the prophecies uh, of the old the with the fulfillment. Of the old with the, with the uh, history of the new. So in these chiasms, you would have, I, I'm just, just now thinking of this now, uh, the, looking at the board, the left side of it, the left side of each chiasm, if I can say it that way, would be the Old Testament the prophecies of the Old Testament using that principle and the and the right side would be the 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 history or the fulfillment of okay, okay so you have let's, keep it, let's keep it simple I'm going to use yeah. your logic you can tell me if if this is a, a fair application of your logic because we're going to challenge your logic the left side is the old and the the right side's the new. Yes, yeah, or the old, uh, or the prophecies. The, uh, the, old, uh, the, the old Testament is the, is the prophecies. And, and this is the, the history of the New Testament that fulfills the prophecies. Yes. Okay, old, new. Yes. Do we have a justification for doing anything like this? Brother Jeff, can I, make, can I say something? Sure. Uh, um, over the sanctuary, uh, there is a covering, a veil of covering. It covers from the holy the holy place to the most holy. And that curtain divide is uh, 25, 20 square. It's made from 10 curtains and they were divided into five curtains. When before they put the 10 together, they were divided in between five. Makes the division down the middle with a 1260. So 1260 square of that curtain covers the holy place and 1260 covers the most holy place. But we know that the most holy place is half of the 1260, which the covering is 63. The back side of the curtain falls, the other half of the 
the 1260 falls to the back of the of the sanctuary, which is another 63. So there's two 63s within the holy most holy place of that curtain covering. And I wanted to share that with you. Yeah, I, I understand that, the way that you just said it, and that's the point I was trying to bring out of what Daniel's saying, is that in these chiasm, you got a division, and you're suggesting this is all, you're at least, the Old Testament prophecies inferred here, fulfillment in New Testament history of those prophecy is the most, is the strongest proof is of his divinity. I wasn't getting to that level. I was going to argue that yes, we have, as the sister put in place, you can see a second witness to this in the sanctuary, Patty, and here you have two desolating powers. Paganism followed by papalism. You've got a, this old, new, okay? Here's old paganism, new paganism, if you want to say it this way. Uh, and down here, what do you have down here? Maybe, I don't, that's not how I would apply it. This is Palestine. They're in Palestine. Jacob comes down into Egypt here. Now they're in Egypt. You've got Palestine, Egypt. This is when they come out of Egypt. 215 years in Egypt. 215 years pre-Egypt. What's, it's, the post is after. What's pre? Is it pre? Okay, so... Here, Palestine, Egypt. So this division's there, yeah, it, it, which adds strength to what? To a turning point right in the middle. Yes. Okay. So is it is it what we're saying? Is the claim about a chiastic structure that we're making that the middle of the chiasm is the most important point of reference? Because when we start talking about the disappointment. And I'm, I'm heading back there. I think you have to know that. Okay, sister. If that's true, then what I want to ask is where isn't it true? Hmm. What, what chiastic structure can, and I can't think, what chiastic structure is that not being found in? Does that make sense? Okay, well, I picked, up, I, I picked up the question, if you didn't hear it out there, is if this is true, where is a chiastic structure that doesn't demonstrate that? And so we start looking for one that doesn't. Um, Patty throws in a fourth witness. I only selected three, okay? And I thought these three went together, Christ, Antichrist, the people that reflect Christ's character. I thought that was enough upon the testimony of two or three. But we have four. I'm saying, why would you look? Just Can you stand upon the principle that upon the testimony of two or three, a thing is established? Yes, you can. Yes, yes but can. to test your theory, I think it's smart to try to find something and work through For how, the issue. How many it. times do you test it? Five times? Ten times? At least, at least let's see one. Let's see, one chiastic structure that isn't proving both That sides. isn't proving. I'm saying you'll never you, find one. Are you saying, I, I'm no. saying that if you find one that appears that way, that a reason it appears that way is because you're understanding it wrong. That its, its characteristics are established. Uh, and Daniel, then Kathy. This might be a, like a dumb question, but are, are you saying biblically? I'm saying on the lines that we're laying out, have you found a chiastic structure with the middle point yet that doesn't define the way we're defining these three? I haven't. Well, the ones we've, uh, we've, we've, I can't, uh, we have one on uh, Samuel Snow, and I don't know have the dates on, but we showed it yesterday. They fit. Um, the, the one f was the center one was August 11, and it was about Islam. Um, the first one was, I don't, I'd have to go back. I took a picture of it. I could get on my phone and look. We also know before P&T came into the, and just started to destroy some of the landmarks that we had, we also know that <coughs> you don't see all the way marks in all the, the lines that all you have to see them in is two or three to know that that line, even if it doesn't have all the way marks, 
would be the same. But that isn't speaking to the subject. Why not? Because what we're, what we're analyzing is chiastic structures. So to consider it, you have to have a chiast. You're, you're, you're saying the truth that bringing one line upon another line, the second line, is, it doesn't, it's not demanded that every way mark that is in the first line be recognized in the second line. But that's not what we're dealing with. I was just going to say that, um, I mean, from what I'm saying, maybe the middle point, and I'm just throwing it out there, maybe we could see the middle point. We said the word, like, as a turning point, and also that the middle point weighs heavily on both sides of the arm, but in 538, I, could, I see the point that you're making there, the lifting of the papacy, but then 1798 is, is, is equally a very important way mark. And for me to weigh 538 greater than 1798, I don't, I don't know if I could do that. And then I could say the same thing with 1863 to 1989, with the 1926 in the middle, with the 63 there, and then 1926 should be the, the premier focal point of that chiasm. But then I would say, if that's the case, I guess it speaks to 1863 and it speaks to 1989, but to say 1926 is the focal point of it, I, I think it just kind of is the turning point of it. And maybe there's this idea of a turning point versus, on Christ's line, I understand why we could say right. that because it's the, the cross. cross. So it's very easy to say that. Right. But, and, and, and like Daniel's quote, and, and it's the cross. I mean, it's the turning point in human history. It, it, there's nothing like it in, this, in, the, in the ages of, of the earth. But the, the middle point of the chiasm, in all, all of them? I think this is the center of that 126. It is the focal, 1926. It's speaking to 1919, the beginning of the third generation, a seven year period, identifying the desolation of Adventism over four generations. This is the beginning of the third generation. And as they move into the third generation, right here, they put a policy in place, underline the word policy, run it in the spirit of prophecy in connection with the word principle. And you'll see that one of the biggest themes in the spirit of prophecy is why we were never to put policy over principle. This is the turning point for Adventism. They've rejected everything she's ever said about principle right here. And back here, they did, they did the very same thing. They set aside their first love. If you line Ephesus up, they set aside these two tables, which was their first love. They were called to return to them. Uh, and down here in 1989, they're passed by. And why are they passed by? Because of this choice here. I, I, that's my argument. I, I think even that fits. Um, and you said one other thing. But getting there, Can I just go ahead. 1863, the rejections are 2520, so I would say that was the rejection of the, of the charts, our pillars and our foundation. 1888, we reject righteousness by faith, so we reject our pillars and our foundation. 1863, righteousness by faith, 1888, and then we have the God of the, of the Catholic Church in 1926 inside of our buildings, and then 1989, we start over. So I guess there's a there's, there's a downward spiral leading up to 1926, but 1926 is the culmination of the events between 1863 and 1926, and 1989 is just a restart. Um, I don't, I, I get I get the the point, and I and I see it. I just think that maybe there's more than just the middle point is the most important. Maybe we could say that, and also say it's a turning point. It weighs heavily on the two arms because I think that all those principles should be pronounced in the middle point as well because those are consistent too. Um, and, and I think, I, I don't know. Yeah. This here is the four generations. Okay, you're in darkness here because there's always going to be darkness that precedes a time of the end which is 1989. So some of the logic that you're you're putting in here, when you put 1888, it's addressed in a different line, the line of the four generations. Okay, this is generation one. And this is generation two. Generation three, 
uh, generation four. My point is, is it by the time you get to 1888, they have done something in 1863 that doesn't end the first generation, but it's what leads them to this. That's what you're saying. So I'm saying you address your your observations better on this line of four generations than on this chiastic structure. I, I think this chiasm is is teaching a different lesson. It's teaching a lesson about a division of two parts of Adventism, two periods of Adventism that goes along with the two periods of paganism and papalism or these two periods. It's not speaking to the four generations. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, uh, just very quickly, just addressing simply the, the top line, the cross. Okay. Okay. Uh, unless Christ is crucified, then the prophecies of the Old Testament are all in vain. And likewise with the New Testament, it's, I don't know how to say it, but they're dependent upon, the, upon Christ being crucified. Uh, and like it says there in Second Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 14, I'm just pulling one out, uh, out, out of this. Uh, and if Christ be not risen, then is your preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So the other, the old and the new, they are vain unless somehow the cross, quote unquote, is fulfilled. So I think we can use that principle with all the rest of the chiasms, theoretically. Yeah. One of the things before we move out of this, because we got, I want to move to the next point. We use this year day principle, right? Up here you have 1260 days, 1260 days. With the Antichrist, you got 1260 years, 1260 years. Year day principle, you can see that in there. Um, but down here, if you, if you study this out, this chiastic structure lines up with this, okay? But it's not, it's not 2520, it's not 1260, what is it? It's 430, okay, 215, 215. And I just want to point out that when, um, when I've argued that their captivity uh, in Egypt here, this is Egypt, it's, it's the same history as their captivity in, as the Christian captivity in spiritual Babylon. This is, this is a captivity in Egypt, and this is a captivity in two Babylons. What two? We know this one. The 70. Literal Babylon, 70 years. Sister White says, Prophets and Kings 714, it's the 1260s. I just want us to, to note that when I'm saying that their captivity in Egypt parallels this, that it does, prophetically, when, if we're going to compare, so what that would mean, just to give you an example, is in Isaiah 23, it's, it says that the papacy, Tyre, will be forgotten for 70 years as the days of one king. And we plug in the 1260 and say the 70 and the 1260 represents 1798 to the Sunday law because the one kingdom is the United States. This is a history of the United States too. And it's 215 years, not 1260 or not 70. In a simplified thing in my head, I, I'll, I see why 1926 would be very, very significant it, because it opens up the door for Catholicism and Adventism to clasp hands. So when they go down the road and they give them that medal and, and they do all that, it's, uh, the door is opened right there by putting that um, rule in place. The story is... I think it's a valid story. I've never heard the critics argue against this story. The story was that at the 1919 Bible Conference, W.W. Prescott, he was, he was opposed to Sister White on several levels. 
they're trying to settle his rebellion. They come together. This is the story. They let him do these presentations. And the majority of the, the Adventist leadership that is there at the Bible conference listening to his presentations says, he's wrong. What he's teaching is error. But it, it was such a good presentation. Let's take the transcription and turn it into a book. So they knew, they knew that what he taught wasn't correct, but they went ahead and they turned it into a book. And then they sent Prescott two places. They sent him to the divisions and the unions on planet Earth to promote his book. So they promoted this. At a, at a, uh, and not, all, not all the leadership was here. This is just a group of, of the edu of certain a select group at the 1919 Bible Conference. This is not a general conference session. Okay, this is a, a meeting that you have outside of a general conference session. Here, this is a general conference session. So when you're talking about paganism being removed in 508 and there's a 30 years preparation. This preparation is understood by the book, Doc The Doctrine of Christ, what went on in that history. It wasn't a general conference action, even though they were opening the floodgates. But when you put this into a general conference statement and its policy over principle, it's a big deal. And the logic of this preparation period fits perfectly with this history, but I got to move out of here. Everyone, okay, so I'm arguing I don't know everything about the center point. I don't know how to ex express it purposely, but pretty much there's something about the center being the primary focus of a chiasm. So over here, I've been claiming that this chiasm here, 63 and 63, everyone know what that is? It's the midnight chiasm right here. That this is our point of reference for bringing the other chiastic structures. A question about the chiasms. If we take the chiasms, are you saying that every center point lines up with every other center point? And if you were saying that, how would we make sure we stay away from what happened in 2014 with the soldier and all his ideas that he did that identical thing? How, how do we stay away from doing what he did? And are you even saying that? Okay, so you... How would we... Okay, you, you, there was more than one question there, uh, but let me let me be clear here. Um, the soldier, I know who you're talking about. I know who the revolutionary is. I know who you're talking about, and I know who P and T are. Um, I don't care what they teach. Period. Forget it. Okay, we're focusing on what what the Lord is opening up here. If we find out that we end up applying the same kind of logic to a passage of prophecy that they used and we understand it to be valid, then at minimum, I would argue that it was Satan's attempt to push us off the right trail because the other fruits of those influences made us leery of anything that they were saying. And Satan works that way. He will present a valid truth through an instrument that makes you reject that truth because you know the instrument doesn't have the fruits of the Spirit. Okay, so I'm not going to deal at that level. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to evaluate these things just on what we're learning. And uh, if there's some things that have been put in the record by other people before we got there uh, that we don't have confidence in, too bad. Second question then, are you saying that the hinge for every chiastic structure is the same? Every chiastic structure can be lined up straight down the line and you can take truths from that hinge all the way down. Is that what you're saying? What I said the, the other day was that for sure every chiastic structure that we can illustrate the 126, the 63, the 63, or the 1260, that you have, through prophetic symbolism, the right to do so. You're asking me now, does that mean that every chiastic structure that we would come across would be lined up with midnight? And 
my, my answer to that was what I put on the board yesterday. Midnight is the effect of every vision. Every vision. I got a question and then a, a follow-up question so that I can keep this one thought. Is, is it not true that in some of these lines that you're putting out here, that when you place them in, in one way, that the middle point could be one date, and but then when you place it another way, the starting point could be the middle point as well, mm -hmm. meaning the same date. Like 11-9, for example, could be the starting point for one of these, but it also, okay, is that true? Yeah, we, ha we put one of those up there. Okay, well then, if that's true, doesn't that example teach us that the middle point is the lesson for that application? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I, that's another way to say what we're saying, I think. But just, I, let me point this out. This, I haven't followed, I, uh, it's hard for me to settle in to what Theodore's teaching on the Aztec Mayan calendar. It's just too much information for my old mind, and I know he's been going through that. And we did a presentation here that evidently sparked some kind of um, response from him. And I haven't followed up on it, but I've got some feedback from him and from Odilio and Stephen. And we had a chiasm over here that was 63 and 63, if you remember. And then there was a chiasm here that was almost half of, one, of 327. It was, what, one... 160. Okay, this is what caused, I don't know if it's 64.5, what would that be? 329, and we're looking for 327. It was 328, I think. Maybe that's it. This, this is open for correction, but it, there is a chiasm that we're talking about. And what I conjectured was if we, could, if we would just lose one day, then these two would add up to 327. Seven, that's right. Okay, that was my conjecture, and that's what started Theodore and them looking, at, looking more closely at the Mayan Aztec calendar, and, the, and they came up with some, evidently, some interesting stuff there. 164.5 is correct. Okay, and, but what we did on that, just for us, disregarding all that, is this was a chiastic structure, and so was this and this. Okay, so what you're saying is, or I, I, part of what you're saying is, even though this is like the beginning of this chiastic structure and this is the end, begins with a chiasm, it ends with a chiasm, I, I think to speak to a question that's being raised, I don't know if it's by everyone, do we have the right to take this chiasm and lay it over the top of this one and this one and lay it over the top of that one? And at this point, I'd say, yeah, because, because why? What's Miller's rules that would tell us we need to do that? Symbols have more than one meaning. This is a symbol. The whole line here is a symbol of this chiasm that begins with the chiasm and ends with the chiasm. But we can break it and break it. And then this is a chiasm, and this is a chiasm, and this is a chiasm all by itself. Now it's a symbol of a chiasm, and they're to be brought together line upon line. Go ahead, Brahma. Okay, so then the question is if we all agree that the midnight center hinge, or the pin that's there that allows us to hinge things, they're all the same and we can take truths from them, then those endpoints must also line up with the other endpoints, and then we end up with just one line with three sets in it. We've just got pretty much one line now. Anything chiastically structured is just beginning, ending, center. They're all the same. They just teach us a different truth. Is that true? Does that, does that question even make sense? No, that isn't true. It's, it's true at, a, at the level of analyzing the chiasms, but we still have a line up here, and let's just to make your point, this is midnight, and I'm not, I'm not claiming any perfection about this. Uh, this is 9-11, uh, and this is the Sunday law. We still have to deal with this line, and it's, it's sequential. 
Yes, but when you're putting midnight as your middle point, then every point before it is 9-11 and every point after it is Sunday law. Mm. So then you're just... No, I, you can't... You, okay. Uh, no, once you determine that the start and end points of each chiasm that you're bringing line upon line, you have... Well, you weren't here yesterday. Did you watch it on TV? Yeah, I did. Okay, so th we were doing that at the one level. What I'm saying is mm -hmm. it doesn't destroy our responsibility of, to have a line of sequential events. But if we're at midnight, if we determine where we're at on this chiastic structure and we're placing lines and we should be able to forecast based on all the other lines are teaching us all the identical same things that are coming. Uh, name, name one prophecy so far that we've forecasted that None. come true. None. None. Okay. Of all the prophetic fulfillments that we have recognized since 1989, of all the prophetic fulfillment since 1989 that we've recognized hindsight. they're all hindsight it's not what, it's, yeah. it's not what Theodore said well internally, I'm not, Theodore's not here you have to get online to defend himself we've, we've, we've forecasted internal events that have taken place and we've understood them, we haven't reached the no, external we haven't. forecast we've forecast, forecast internal events did. that's what Theodore said that, that's what I'm reading. But what Theodore says is that all the things that we have recognized were internal. Okay, all the things that's better stated. No. Yeah. But I don't believe that. And, but that is what he said. I have it here. I'll, I'll read it. To okay. You okay. Dig it out. But see, 9 11, it has an internal, but it has an external. 1989, it has an internal, but it has an external. Uh, 1996, there's more externals to 96. There's just one internal. Time of the End magazine, but you've got Ben, La ben Laden's pro proclamation of the third woe. You have Fox News. You have CNN. So, there's, so to, the, all these fulfillments are not just internal. All of this is a quote from his email on Tuesday at 10.01 a.m. All of the events that we have predicted so far that have been fulfilled were internal. So that's what he believes. Oh, yeah, okay, but there's a... That's no, a that's predicted and fulfilled. Okay, predicted which ones fulfilled. are those? I don't think there are any. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. But he, why would he say that? That's if he didn't he believe that there were some... Yes. Brother Jeff, Brother Jeff. Yes. Does it have to be... Would it have to be a prediction with uh, a date on it? Or no, could it be a, no. Okay, so if you if you look at a video that you did on January seventeen seventeen, yeah. it's full of things that you spoke would happen, and we are living them now. Yeah, that's true. We predicted the pandemic, the 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 crisis, the, the financial crisis. Video we didn't predict it. We were just analyzing the prophetic video 70 or 71 Habakkuk's tables predicted the Omega apostasy predicted the Omega apostasy go ahead there, there was um, you were identifying the relationship that Ellen White and Kellogg had that she had assisted him that she had helped them and that's reminded me of the relationship that you had with Parminder yes from, you had the from right. years back you, you, you took him in under your arm and so I saw that as speaking of him also there. Mm -hmm. You speak of that in that video. Yes. Okay, so you just you just justified Theodore's claim. There has been some predictions that we have made, but according to Theodore, they were all internal. He he predicted a date that did that we did not think was valid. Who? And Theodore, and he had a meeting at. Let's not go there. Please. Well, if he's referring to that, that would be different. Yeah, but in order to go back to into that, we got to go into what he was, what he believes, what we believe. I don't want to. I don't. That isn't. That's off. That's not even speaking of what he's saying. They're two different things. If he's talking about that, he predicted a date, and he believes. He's not talking about that. He's saying this movement. Read it again, Clayton. He's not. He's All not talking the about events himself. Events we have predicted so far That's the and movement. that have been fulfilled were internal. Yeah, I read that myself. Yeah, I did too. And I, 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 
I think that really so the pandemic isn't external what about Trump what about oh, Trump okay. Okay. So well, we didn't. We got chastised because we didn't predict Trump. We sat in here in this room and said, "It looks like it's Trump, but we're not going to come out on the record." And then we got chastised for not coming on record. Predict the forty-fifth would be the last. Yeah, but that's the, yep. we can't prove that now. Uh, we can't prove it yet. Also, also the the um, president of the conference, uh, he was supposed to retire, and it was said before that he would be. The existing um, president of the uh, conference. Yes. But until until July 18th and December 25th gets here, he could he could have a heart attack and die today, and then we would be proved wrong if we're going to use that one. So, but anyway, let's. That isn't my point. It's it's interesting stuff. Okay, and we probably need to grapple with it. But I want to go over here now. We've been, I was building on this chiasm here, but there's another chiasm here. It, it, it connects with this one, but from November 9th, it goes, if you go back 252 days, you go to where? October 13th, 2018. This is 2000, and this is 2020. So in this chiastic structure, this 11.9 is Ezekiel 1.1. 1, 1. I mean, uh, there's, there's too many witnesses. Is that what it is? Is this Ezekiel 1.1, 1, 1, is that the center of this chiastic structure? Okay, what happened on October 13, oh, 2018? Second testimony. Second testimony. Oh, oh, yeah, of the 391.5. Ten days earlier... On October 3rd, on this board right here, November 9th was marked. Okay, this is the, the prediction of November 9th. The second witness came 10 days later. One, the first one was test, right? Right. Yeah, and but the you know, the, uh, you go back and look. Let's, let's be clear now because we need clarity at this point. She, and I, in, in Karen, Karen was in here at one, one meeting, and I, and I did an old card trick on Karen to make this point, okay? And I, I wrote the card, the, you know, like the jack of clubs, and then I led her through a, a process to where she ends up choosing the jack, jack of clubs, and I picked up the piece of paper, and I showed her the jack of clubs. I can do that. It's just, it's easy to do. It's not magic. It's just con okay it's a con job and the reason I was saying that with Karen is and that's in this time frame if you remember test did not say November 9th this class did she led us to a point and then we all come up and put November this has got to be November 9th okay so I don't know what that means necessarily but let's be clear it wasn't that she she no doubt had November 9th in the back of her mind that's where she was leading it because when I wrote the jack of clubs for for Karen or whatever it was I knew I had to get her there okay and so she got us there and then this school marked November 9th and then 10 days later at Lambert Church Theodore calculates out the 391 and a half days that, in, is that what it was? It's 391 and a half. Okay, so I'm off here. It takes us from, what's the starting point in Theodore's? Yeah, I'm not off. No, that's what his, his discussion was on October 13 was the 391.5. Yeah. yeah, that's what, what he saw, but he had a starting point back here. What's the starting point? Anyone know that from here to here, from this point to this point, is 391 and a half? It's October 13th to November 9th is the 391, because that's, that's what the chart, you've got it right here on the Italian camp meeting. Okay. That, this is a bummer, I'm, my bad. Three Italian camp meeting. 
Oh, all right, all right. This one, I, I got, I got a date wrong. I got a date wrong. Let me start over. It doesn't change the, the, the dilemma that I'm trying to put in place. It just makes it confused for us, okay? I'm sorry. If you start at 11.9 and go to 11.9.19 to and go to July 18th, 2020, and then you go 252 days into the future, goes to March 27th. Okay, so... You got it backwards there. I think it may be 2021, right? March 27, 21. Yep. That's what's written on this chart. Wow. Yeah, but I, I don't think this is even what I'm looking for. It isn't the, the challenge that I wanted to bring to us. So here is the midnight chiasm of 9, 7, And let me see if I can pull out one more. I don't see it. I had this in my head for 24 hours now. <laughs> my head wrong, okay. This here is connected with October 13th. Now I don't know how to do it in the context of Those are all Sabbaths. the point that I wanted to make. This is a Sabbath. 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 Seven, seven, seven. Okay. October 13th was a Sabbath. October 13th was a Sabbath. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't know what that has to do with it. The 391.5 goes from October 13th to 11.9. Yep. 391.5. Okay, my point was this, and it doesn't work now unless, I've, unless I remember a chiasm that I could plug in here. This here is Ezekiel 1.1, but it's connected to October 13th, but not by a chiasm. Okay. So, what I was pondering after yesterday's presentation was this. Was October 13th a fulfillment of prophecy? Oh, it's good. I got, I got, I'll put you into a similar place where I'm at. Was October 13th a fulfillment of prophecy? October 13th is Fatima. On page two of your notes, you've got June 9th um, and right here in the middle, you've got August 11th. And June 9th is the second Italian camp meeting. What was that? 2018. And this is 63 days. And this is 63 days. So is October 13th a fulfillment of prophecy? <clears throat> is that the day that uh, the, the Brazilian said that too? That's what's always mentioned from Theodore. No, this is just a center point. I'm talking about October 13th. He stood up front. Said, yeah, he, he was guy. preaching on October 13th, and he had predicted October 13th, but he did it back here on March 27th. Oh. 
different different thought. But is now, is October thirteenth a fulfillment of prophecy? It isn't. Okay, well you want to put Fatima? No, 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 we've had we've had two witnesses to Fatima. October thirteenth was really important. Um, was June 9, two thousand eighteen, a fulfillment of prophecy? Yes. Amen. Yes, it was. Why was it? Because there's no way you're going to line up the nine elevens like that. That's prophetic. Okay, there was a miracle of nine eleven here, mm -hmm. but how? How do we get to June 9th? Where does it start for this school? It's oh, back exactly. in June 22nd, 2011, we start seeing these footsteps that lead us to here. Okay, this is a waymark that has been established. Three years, previous is when we got right? Is that the idea? Well, no, that was June 22nd, but June 22nd, 2011, we get the money for the school. June twenty second, three years later, on two thousand fourteen, we have the "Behold, the Bridegroom Cometh" okay. camp meeting that begins on June twenty second, the very same day. And what was opened up was Ezra seven nine. Everyone should know this. I'm telling you, you need to know this. And Ezra seven nine is where we saw that there was twelve hundred and sixty days to the midnight cry, and then seventy days to the Sunday law, based on Millerite history. Was it twelve sixty? 1260? No, 120. You guys should let me get it. It was 120 days from the first day of the first month in 1844 to August 15th and then 70 days to, to October 22nd. We plug it into our history. We say from 9-11, 120 days takes us to the midnight cry. 70 days takes us to the Sunday law. We learned that from Ezra 7-9. We presented it the first time at the Behold the Bridegroom Cometh camp meeting that began on June 22nd, 2014, exactly three years after we got the money for the camp meeting on June 22nd. No, I remember Ezra 7, 9, the first time it was mentioned in Habakkuk's Tables 94 and 95. Yes, yes, because Habakkuk's Tables is concluding at the very time that Ezra 7, 9 is being opened up, and then we determine we're going to have a camp meeting, and we call the camp meeting, Behold the Bridegroom Cometh, and it starts on June 22nd exactly three years after the money. And then what was opened up is 120 and 70. That's Ezra 7-9. Okay. And 120 days later, after that camp meeting, we have another camp meeting called Eating the Little Book or something. So it's not that. Eating the Hidden Manna. And then 70 days after that, we have a camp meeting in Germany. Okay, so these footsteps begin that ultimately lead us to... Germany. Yeah, I think Italy. it was... Italy. 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 No, 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 no. We're, we're still back in 2014. It's, it's, it's yeah. Europe. Let's keep it simple. Europe. Okay. And we're, we have... Now, now Rafi and Paneum are going to open up. Okay, so they're opening up before. But when we get to here... In this presentation, not so many days ago, presentation-wise, we walk through these footsteps. And I believe everyone that walked through them was wowed, weren't you? Yeah, but I don't remember what it was. What was June 9? June 9 was the second Italian camp meeting, and I was preaching in Italy on 9-11, and we closed that Sabbath at exactly 9-11 without knowing that we were going to do it. Okay, so this waymark, outside of being locked in the chronology that has unfolded, was emphasizing 9-11. 63 days later takes you to August 11th. What is August 11th? It's a symbol of Islam. If this is a chiastic structure, what's the center point? What's the theme of this? Islam. So when Theodore gives a second witness to November 9th, what is the, the chronolo chronological, chronological tool that he uses to establish November 9th? 391 and a half. What is that a symbol of? Islam. So all three of these are Islam. Is this a fulfillment of prophecy, it's irregardless of Fatima? Yes. yes, it is. Okay, it is. If you if you can't if you can't be settled on that, 
then you're on shaky ground, I would think, right? And if you're not willing to say, yes, this is a way mark, then how can you how can you defend the way marks? You've been called to defend the way marks. If you're not if you're not even willing to say it is a way mark, you're certainly not going to defend it. And we're supposed to defend the way marks because they come under attack. Okay, so this is a way mark. And what I was getting at now is what I was getting at is that this particular way mark was a fulfillment of prophecy, but it has associated with it a false prophecy. Okay, and for some reason I had it in my head that this was the beginning of a chiasm that, that ended on November 9th, and I was going to argue that on November 9th, is that a fulfillment of prophecy? Yes. Yes, but what else was it? It was a false prophecy. Yes. There was a false prophecy there. Okay, so... <laughs> It, go ahead. I can understand the requirement of, of these ones over here and being able to explain them and all of that. I don't see your logic on that, on why you'd have to explain that. It has nothing to do with anything external. It, it, from my perspective, I'm saying. I explain that the, what? The, you're saying that we have to know the June 9, the August 11, the October 13. You would never teach that to anybody outside of the of, of movement. These ones would make sense to. That one is just the meetings we had and people said stuff. It's not, I don't see it as the same weight, even though it has the, maybe, you know, all those indicators. Because it's... I disagree, but why would I disagree? I, I disagree too because... Well, why do you disagree? Because um, this is the internal and that's the external. And the internal is, is the, shows that the the path that we're going down is right on and that God is showing us by these dates and these events. Okay, you're almost the same point as me. The, I've used a quote in, in this presentation of these footsteps where Sister White speaks to the Millerite movement and she says, we have the prophecies that were testified to by the miraculous working of God. So she said in the Millerite history they had the fulfillment of prophecy but at the same time, they had the, the second witness of the miraculous working yeah, the, of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what I okay. said. I said that's okay to understand for the people in this movement. I'm saying, how do you, why would you teach that to the I never said anything about who you teach it to. I'm saying to the people of this movement, you need to know that. And the reason that the people in this movement need to know that is they have to know who they are. They have to understand that they are... Uh, Joseph and Abraham and Moses, they have to believe that they are the 144,000 in order to give the message. If you don't believe it, you won't give it. I agree with that, but in order to give the message, that's not the message you give. It's these ones, is my point to that. I'm, I'm not arguing that uh, yeah, oh, maybe so. understood from the 300. What I'm saying uh, is that the 200,000, why would you have to tell them about October 13th? Uh, I never, once again, I never said you had to tell anyone anything. I said, we have to know it. We have to know it. I'm saying that if you do not believe that this movement has been testified to by the miraculous working of God, that you do not have the spiritual mentality that is needed to proclaim this final warning message. You have to have it. You have to have confidence that the Lord's leading you. Otherwise, the best you could be, in my mind, if you're going to give the message, is some kind of uh, math guy that understands math and he sees the logic of the math and he can go out and throw the math out into the mix and, and do some defense of it, but he doesn't know that he's actually supposed to be Moses, Joseph, and Aaron. Abram. 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 Aaron. <laughs> okay, so, so my point was, I, th I thought this was a chiastic structure and it isn't. And I was going to make a point here that there was a false prophecy connected with this and a false prophecy connected with this. Yeah, that's interesting. And w I was going to argue that, what's this say about here? But it doesn't, because this isn't a chiastic structure. Right. It doesn't say that, okay? okay but so only the chiastic structure, that's, that's what I'm trying to get. That's, that's well, I, I set us up wrongly, and, and I'm still looking to see if there was any reason that I had justification for doing that. Um, and maybe there is, maybe there isn't. 
we went far enough. I'm still trying to dredge the idea about this date, and I was going to try to get to Emmanuel's comment, and I'll at least put it in our minds. If you remember his comment yesterday, uh, anyone besides Emmanuel remember it? What his logic was? Yep. He, he, he didn't want to put 1840, right? He did. He did want to put he 18. To keep it where it was at and not move it forward to the. No, he was he was saying this is 1840. This is 1840. Okay, so you already had your. Okay. Why was he doing that? What, what justification would he have to make, to, to think that? Well, they both attack, well, they, they, they both involve Islam. Okay. Well, I, I would say also that immediately after October 13th, within that, that following week, before October 20th, Theodore had recognized not only that this went to November 9th, but he had recognized this 252, and I immediately went out in the public arena within a week or two, probably that first week, and suggested that this must be Paneum. Okay, so, so what's that mean? It means in terms of Josiah Litch that we had made it two years before. I thought he was addressing the disappointment and how it couldn't be. No, I was challenging him with his, uh, I was the one that, saying, how do you fit the disappointment, the first disappointment in over here after. Yeah. Right. If you're going to have two disappointments, that was my challenge that you heard. If, th if this was valid, what do we have to include in here? A lot of things, but in terms of Josiah Litch. It reaches a point with Josiah Litch to, to what does he do? He, no, he fine-tunes it. He, he, he went from August 1840 to August 11th, 1840. He fine-tunes it. Ten days. That was ten Fatima days before. is 38. Pardon me? What makes you choose Fatima as 38? 1838. October. October 13th, the miracle of Fatima took place on October... No, why are you putting Josiah Litch's Josiah 1838 there? Because on October 13th, 2018, Theodore provides the second witness to November 9th. You got that in your head? Okay, he immediately thereafter, he does it by projecting the 391 to November 9th, and he immediately thereafter recognizes that from November 9th to July 18th is 252 days. And he tells me about it, and for me, that means that's a 2520. There isn't, it's not an accident. This has to be a waymark, and at that point, Hess had led us to believe that this is Raphia. So I said, okay, 252 days later, this has got to be Paneum. So within one or two weeks of us recognizing this, we put in the record that July 18th, 2020, we were calling it Paneum. And that's where, uh, where P&T started protesting. Oh, you can't do that. You can't, you can't go anywhere beyond November 9th. And, and, but she had already put it on the board. So I said, well, why can't we do it if you have did it? Um, and so this became an issue and it was, I dropped the subject pretty much. But the point is, two years before, we had put it in the public record, okay. echoing Josiah Litch. But Josiah Litch... Ten days before, on August 1st, he fine-tunes it. So if this were 1840 all over again, then there's some fine-tuning that has to take place with Josiah Litch. Did he move his date? Yes. Yeah. No, he did not no, he move did. his date. He said October, he just didn't say October. No, August. I mean August, right. It was sometime in the month of August. Sometime in the month of August, 1840. It's not, it's, it, no, it isn't. He, it was still in August. He just gave it an exact date. If I tell you sometime... Yeah, it'll be sometime in the month time. of August. Then I'm going to think, okay, between August... Oh, okay, let's put it this way. Was it fulfilled on August 11th? Yes. Yeah. No, I, I let Bronwyn answer. She's the one that's doing this. Was it fulfilled on August 11th? 
1840. No, it was fulfilled prior to. No, was it fulfilled on August 11th, 1840? Yes. Answer is yes. yes. Was it fulfilled in August of 1840? No argument. Yes. Yes. Was it fulfilled in 1840? Yes. Yes. He didn't so change his date. True. He didn't change his so date. Your Noah argument. Okay, that's great. On the I 120 that you said yesterday, because he said 120 years, and then there were seven delayed, and is that the same? Thing? It's not pulling anything out of the air. That's what that's what Miller did. Years. Miller was, was saying 1843, and the history of Adventism is about fine tuning. That's what Samuel Snow is. He's fine tuning 1843. First to 1844, and then to month and day. And that's what Josiah Litch and Samuel Snow go together. They're two witnesses. They both fine-tune it to a month and a day. Okay. Know it then, right? That's what you're saying. Noah. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Until he got in the ark. Hundred and two. Yeah. Well, we dealt with that. <laughs> Daniel threw it in the mix. Yeah, yeah. After he's in the ark, the Lord yeah. tells him yeah. seven days. That's Hiram Edson on October twenty third, having the the movement of Christ to the most holy place opened up to him in vision. Mm -hmm. But he didn't get it before October twenty second, and Noah didn't get it before he got in the ark. Maybe I misread um, Brother Theodore's emails that he was writing, but what he was saying is we have um, checks leading up to July 18th, 2020, other dates that we've, we've considered in different structures that might give us more light that we're heading in the right direction. Did he yeah. not say that? Yeah, yeah. He, he has other dates that hit before here, and we've handled some of them before. My point for going here was I wanted to throw in the mix, I'll, I'll say it this way, without chiasms. I thought chiasm would be a point of reference to teach it. Well, at minimum, even in the midnight chiasm, the Lord opens the temple in Ezekiel 1-1 in the 30th year at midnight in the 45th president of the United States. There was a false, in that history, there was a false prediction. So you got, you got a true and a false there like you have a true and a false here. So even there, you, if, we, if we're saying that November 9th is the center point, one of the characteristics of November 9th was a counterfeit, if we could call it that way. Okay, so I wanted to, I wanted to bring that into the consideration of July 18th uh, because there has to be a disappointment. Brawen and you, and then we'll, we can end this. And then another question on your chiasms. If you... Okay, 252 is 2520, but 252 is also 1260, and 1260 is also 126, and 126 is also 63. We've all agreed to that. So do our chiastic structures that we're accepting with these middle points as their defining characteristic, do they have to be really chiastically structured or could it be a 63 and a 252 mm -hmm. or a 126 and a 1260 do they always have to be equally spaced or are we going to get loose with that and not in a negative way and i they're not I sometimes wait on that 70 question. and sometimes no that's not what she's saying uh -uh. she's saying mm -hmm. a chiastic structure is always equal. 1260, 1260. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like oh, but a 1260, a 1260 also represents 70, right? Yes. So can you have a chiastic structure that is 1260 and 70? Amen. That's the question. No, you can't. You can't. That's what a, chi a chiasm is. It's the, the perfect footsteps. In, in Hebrew literature, it's the perfect footsteps to the top point and it's the identical footsteps down. Okay. I, I think we, it would be, unless there's a secondary type of chiasm, it's not the one we're dealing with. Okay. Thank you. I'm not prepared to go there. Uh, I, I, I didn't forget, I, well I kind of forgot what you were saying about 11.9 just now, I wanted to just pinpoint something right off of what you just said about 11.9, um, something about a uh, uh, a false prophecy or a counterfeit. A counterfeit. That's what you said. Okay. Tess's predictions over twenty predictions yeah. did not collapse continue. right there. So, so then, in what I was saying saying yesterday, that specific 
thing if we line up the other chiasm, that's 1926 as well. That's the middle point of the chiastic structure with the 1863, 9-7. 1926, 11, 9, 1989, 1, 11. So in that sense, I, I was, I'm just saying it again, just to, just to put it out there, that when, when the 11th of January becomes 1989, the next major waymark in after 1989 is the Islamic waymark of August 11th, 1840, which is a definite prediction by Josiah Lynch in that history. So if I don't think so. Oh, it's not. Okay. Uh, wait. I. I I'm, it may not be. I may not be attacking what you're saying, but you're making a claim that isn't valid. Uh, 1840 or 1989 is where you wanted to start. Or but that would be 1798 for Millerites, right? Yeah. Sure. And then you said 1840, mm -hmm. and you said something like. And we got it recorded, okay. Then the, the next major waymark is 1840. After the, formula, okay, the formalization, is that where you're going? Okay, yeah, yeah there's other waymarks in here, yeah. that's all I'm saying. And that's what Brown was speaking to about Theodore. True. Theodore has, has come up with some other dates in here. Yeah. So I'm simply saying, don't be exclusive about it. If, if you're going to deal with it, deal with all the waymarks. True, and I, and I would agree with that. I, I totally agree with that, and that waymark has to be dealt with. But if we're just going to deal with the next Islamic waymark after the time of the end, and if 2020, January 11th, now becomes a symbol of 1989, um, symbolizing 1798 and in 1798 there was this 1840 prediction that happened and then in 1989 there was 911 a prediction that we could have knew was going to happen because Ellen White says it in Testimonies Volume 9 starting in page 11 that we could have knew but we foresaw it looking backwards then maybe we're having another opportunity to have those three uh, th triple application to say well then 1840 there was a prediction that came to pass and 911 is a prediction that we should have known that gave power and our date is a prediction that will come to pass and we should have known from the Nashville quotes from Sister White's writing. And now we have the opportunity to fulfill both histories in our day. So we're September 7th is our time of the end, is that what you're saying? No, he's saying January 11th when you go down in the enemy's camp and, and that's based upon yesterday's study yeah. uh, that you can put 19 1989 or 1798 here. So the book of Daniel is unsealed. On January 11th, it's unsealed. Therefore, this is a type of a time of the end. Yep. Okay, so 111, time of the end. But this time we should know. But if we're going to hit all the waymarks that we know of, there's going to be one here that was 10 days before on 8-1-1840. And you should have 1996 in here, or 1818 in Millerite history. What's his justification for putting January 11th as 1989? One more time. Because in the midnight chiasm, yeah. what's opened up in here is Daniel in Revelation, but Daniel primarily on 111 because Gideon goes down into the enemy's camp. And see, here's the dream and the interpretation thereof. That's Daniel 2 and Daniel 4. And on January 11th, something that, that Daniel taught, that Daniel taught on Sabbath, clicked in my mind when I was sitting back there. And from that point on, I was seeing these kingdoms in Daniel's last vision. It was all there. That's what we've been dealing with since that. So here we went down into the enemy's camp. So here the book of Daniel was unsealed again. All right, that's the, the, the logic of it. And we have witnesses of 1989 and 1798 that we can put on this way mark. Yeah, and also in, in more simple ways, 111 is the end of a 126, which is the same thing as this 2520. Yeah, this would be um, 723, yeah. 723 without the dash to 1798, 2520. 
and that was kind of the whole thing. If that was a 126, that's kind of where the logic started, was that if there was a 126 between there, then the, the 126 we first seen was the many men to take we farce But then the 126 we first seen in Adventism was between 1863 and 1989. So then we, that's what we was doing yesterday, plugging that history with the 9-7 to the 11th of January. And if that's the case, the 11th of January begins to be for us again a symbol of the time of the end. And if that's the case, I'll say this last point, if that's the case, now we have a prophecy of Islam behind us that happened, 9-11, um, and now we're in a time... And 1840. Of in 1840, but I'll go there in a second. I will say in, in, in our day we have a time period, yes, true, 9-11 uh, that happened before us, in our history, that happened in our history before us. And the Millerites had in their history a 9-11 that happened before them, not 1840. That's the one that's coming, but the one before them was the 1299, the 150 years, the first woe. So they have one behind them and a prediction to make. Now with 2020 being the time of the end, we have one behind us, 9-11, and a prediction to make. Yeah, but also to add to that is 9 11 is 1840. Yeah. Uh, Elder Jeff? Yes. Uh, is it correct to, uh, is it a correct application to put 1840 with July 18, 2020? Because 1840 there was no disappointment, but um, I think I think we're saying that there's going to be a disappointment waiting to to, have, to take place um, on July 18. So is it correct to is it a correct application to parallel 1840 with July 18? That's what he's talking about. Yeah, it, th that's what he's talking about. But her point is, is we've already brought logic to bear that July 18th is going to be produce a disappointment, but. August 11th, 1840, did not produce a disappointment. Yes. It, it what did it produce, Sister Sharmila? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. Tremendous impetus. Yeah, it, it, impetus. It produced just the opposite. Yeah. 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 Amen. And in some prophecies, the waymarks are just the opposite. And that's a Elijah never died, and he typified John the Baptist who did die. So we could have 1840, them celebrating the fulfillment, typifying a disappointment in our history. That would work. Yeah, mm -hmm. because... Yeah, I see that. Thank with, you. With 9-11, the question, I mean, it was a glorious manifestation of the power of God, but did it produce that, how's it, what's the word, a great impetus? Wonderful. Uh, we missed it. I no. I think so. We missed it. Okay, so th that's where we're heading. I, I'm sorry I blew it on the chiasm that I had in my mind, but if we come to the discussion of a disappointment, we have to, I think we have to acknowledge that some of these waymarks that have taken place have s satanic counterfeits. It's part of the story. The Omega movement, uh, it's part of the story that we have to grapple with. And even though 11.9 is the opening of the sanctuary to the priest in their 30th year, at the same point in time you can see Satan has his hands in the mix here uh, with the Omega movement. And back here on October 13th, as significant as that is, giving a second witness to November 9th, this is also... Uh, this, what the Catholic Church celebrates is the, the Feast of Fatima every year, October 13th. And uh, this is also the very first presentation that Tess brought in here in this history when she began to open these things up, was Fatima. Fatima is part of the subject. And her, there's two, there's a conservative and a liberal approach to the analysis of Fatima in Catholicism. And I'd always... I thought I knew the right one. I was uh, understood the conservative, and when she come in here, she was presenting the liberal one. She's presenting the one that this current pope has. So in, even within the history of Fatima, you see a controversy uh, between two classes within the Catholic Church. So Fatima carries with it the characteristic of an argument over that message, a prophetic message, which I'm not arguing it's a counterfeit prophetic message, but we can see the argument here as well in our internally based upon the external of the beast. So we got to factor in 
I believe that we're in in very I don't know go ahead uh, I guess from this from the sisters um, Sharm Miller. Question, Sharm, Sharm Miller, her question um, was that I, w I was just considering that maybe um, maybe we, we put a disappointment by 1840 or by, by July 18th 2020 because on the line from 1989 the night the real 1989 the year in the Gregorian calendar 1989 we go through these way marks and if we leave 911 where 911 is then that's the fulfillment that drops down from 1840 and then the next way mark is the f disappointment and then the great disappointment so if we start 1989 there we hold to 911 in that fashion then the next thing we're going to do is associated with the disappointment but suppose once we go back to 1989 in 2020 as a symbol we don't go to this way mark as a disappointment we drop back to the time of the end and now we fulfill 9-11 and 1840 again in a triple application a doubling of our generation 1989-1989 again in a sense and then there's no, and in that fashion, there will be no disappointment associated with that way mark because there never has been. Now with 9-11, not with August 11, there never has been a disappointment associated with that way mark. It's only because we're keeping the Gregorian date and we're, we're putting a third way mark on that line. But if we put 2020 over here, the next thing to, to line up here is a way mark that has no disappointment associated with it in our history. Everyone understand that? No, I got lost. You get, how about you, Larry? You understand? Oh, yeah, okay, we'll have to revisit that. Um, uh, he's, he's saying you have a line here where we're putting these way marks, but because we're restarting the line at January 11th, 1989, now you've got a second line to plug in, and, and you, you're going to lay it over the top of this line, and you got 1840, which is Millerite history, so you've got a third witness that you're plugging in. And he's saying when you plug all three of them together and they line up, 9-11 uh, was an 1840, 1840 in the Millerite history was an 1840, neither one of those were disappointments. So if they line up with July 18th, then shouldn't expect a disappointment. If they line up, but... I mean, I, I, even if they do lighten up, they can, you can still have a October disappointment. October 22nd, 1844, which is a disappointment. But it's always with a prediction of Islam. Every time there's a prediction of Islam, it's, it's no disappointment. And 9-11 is very interesting because we could have predicted it because it's in the spirit of prophecy. This is one last point I'll make. In the spirit of prophecy, we could have known that something was going to happen in New York. But then there's something else in the spirit of prophecy. She mentions New York, and it happens in New York, Revelation 18. Then she mentions Nashville. And it says, we, we, this happened exactly as we know it. Why? Because 9-11, we had an opportunity that we missed, but it fulfilled the 1840 line. Now we have another opportunity to go into spirit of prophecy, dig out the 9-11 of our day, Nashville, and 1840, we get to fulfill that too from the Millerite time period. And I'm suggesting these are just all more strengthening witnesses to there's no disappointment in July 18. But maybe that, that's my faith today. That's where that's, I see it. I'm not so sure that that, that this, even if your lines line up, just as you're saying, that that uh, demonstrates no disappointment. Because you have, if you, we're bringing Millerite history in it, we've got two disappointments that we need to address there. And if July 18th, pardon me? The very letter. Yeah, and if July 18th is... Uh, the retribution for the Sunday law or the Sunday law that begins the midnight cry uh, time period, then that also has been typified by 1844. And, and the destruction of Jerusalem. There's other lines to bring there. That, anyway, Heavenly Father, we, we want to understand these things correctly in a way that glorifies and honors you. Uh, we thank you that you're allowing us to dredge these subjects. Uh, please keep these in the forefront of our minds throughout this day that uh, when we return to these subjects, we can take up where we left off. Ask a blessing upon this day's endeavors. Uh, protect us as we work. Watch over us. And we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.